First off, we're going to talk about um, the CTE department, which is the career and technology. Okay, that's me. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to myself. I am Ms. Confletti, and I am the senior 11th and 12th grade engineering pathway teacher at Eastwood Academy. In the 11th grade, your child takes engineering design and problem solving. And in the 12th grade, they take scientific research and design. As you know, your child uses an engineering notebook, an architectural, architectural ruler, and a blue or black pen. Here you can see the grading scale, 20% for the mini milestones, 40% for milestones, and 40% for the major milestones. By all means, parents, you are welcome. As you can see here, our, your child will be exposed to things like um, OSHA 30 in their senior year. We have just set that up and we'll be start kicking that off in the near future. The classroom is project-based. So that allows your child an ability to utilize instructional strategies that are often found in a classroom of that situation. And once again, the grading scale is the same in the senior year with the final culminating project. Before I pass this on to my colleague, I'd like to share with you four takeaways. One, Engage your child in discussion about what is happening in the classroom. Two, check grades often. I take great pride in having a turnaround time of less than 48 hours, with the exception of larger projects. Three, encourage your child to seek clarification or assistance when needed. I'm there early in the morning, and I'm available at lunchtime and during advocacy and after school by appointment. And four, please reach out if you have any concern at all or just want to know what's going on. On a sidebar note though, I want an opportunity to say, if you are a parent who reads the newspaper, please save those and send them in with your child. My class is in need of a large amount of newspaper for an upcoming project in about two weeks. So if you don't mind dropping them off or sending them in, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you again for taking time and I will pass this on. Met are so creative, like I love it. Um, does it switch? Ms. Peltier, your audio is acting up. It sounds very robotic. Let me I can't hear you. It's gonna take me. Would you like me to explain the course? Um, Try speaking real quick. Um, I need to change the microphone. Okay, that, that actually sounds better. Oh, it sounds better? Mm-hmm. Interesting, okay. Oh, Ooh, never mind. No, okay. <laughs> Let me it. okay. So, Ms. Con I don't know who's who's running the slides, but maybe we can skip to the next course and then we'll come back to Ms. Peltier. And good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Mr. Platt, and I will be teaching some of our ninth grade and tenth grade teachers 
excuse me, just one moment. I have to make one small change to my computer. Uh, to, um, I'll be teaching ninth grade and 10th grade students this year in the cybersecurity pathway. Um, I also have an additional elective class. And so ninth graders in the cybersecurity pathway will be taking AP computer science principles. Uh, tenth graders are going to be taking internetworking technologies. And then I have a separate course that is an elective course, AP computer science A. And let's just talk briefly about all of those. So AP computer science principles, again, to all of our ninth graders, we focus on an, an, uh, this as an introductory computer science course. We know that most of our students do not actually have computer science experience and programming experience, but we look at this from the perspective of what a computer science class for everybody should look like. Yes, there's programming, but we look at the why and the how of, of the choices that we make when we program and not just the what. Um, so we look at the creative side, the decision making that goes into the choices you make. We look into, uh, for example, the basics of how data is transmitted across computer networks. And all of these things together will culminate at the end of the year in, for many of these students, their first AP exam. Um, 30 percent of the score from the AP exam is going to come from and through course assessment through a project that they complete during class and then submit to College Board to be scored. The other 70 percent will come from a multiple choice exam that they'll be taking in May. Um, in the 10th grade, next slide please. I'll be moving to internet working technologies and in this class we examine um, we examine um, networking concepts, implementations, and so forth. And this year we're focusing on it from a Cisco uh, centric perspective. The ninth grade course terminates in a, an AP exam for students who are skilled in the material and networking technologies. That trends uh, that will terminate in a Cisco certification exam, which is very valuable for students who are interested in the cybersecurity field, especially this is about the time where students are thinking maybe they want to um, do some summer work, some after school work, and this is the kind of paperwork that would make them much more hireable. Next slide, please. For students who are very interested in computer programming, we have EP Computer Science A. This is what computer science would look like from the perspective of a, an actual first semester computer science major. We cover all of the material that you would actually see in a CS major, uh, in a CS major program. Uh, covering it over 10 units, you can see the first five on the screen and the next five once the next slide flips. Um, again, this terminates in an AP exam as well. This is an unusual course in that this is a two credit course. Uh, if your student is enrolled in this class, please understand that this course will count double. When you get their report card grade at the end of the grading cycle, they're actually going to receive two grades for this course. One will say AP Computer Science for math, or APCS math. One will say APCS uh, a, um, for um, languages other than English. Uh, effectively, um, they will get two A's or two B's, two C's or what have you. Um, we still only meet in one period, and that means that we make some conscious choices about we cover what we cover in class versus what their expectations are um, at home. Generally speaking, all of their lecture material is provided for them to work on at home. I take questions at the start of class cover um, any worksheet or quiz questions that they struggle on because they'll take a quiz immediately at the start of a new unit and they'll transition straight into writing a series of programming labs and there'll be a test every couple of units, but that test is actually a take home test for them and they'll have several days to complete that. Next slide, please. So um, if you want to be successful, please stay on task in my class. 
please make sure to turn in work in time, especially if you're in an AP course, because in both of my AP courses, no late work is accepted. Definitely be willing to make mistakes. We do a lot of things in here where the first time you do it, you don't necessarily do it the right way, and that's okay. Be willing to learn from your mistakes. Be willing to do it a second time or a third time. I don't judge you by how many mistakes you make. I judge you by what happens when you finally succeed. If you're in computer science principles, be sure to document your learning. Um, your uh, binder, your um, well, your binder grade with me is actually going to be weighted as a test grade. So when they're taking an actual test at the end of the unit, I'm also going to be check taking in their binders and checking them to verify that they're documenting their learning because I find that there is a huge correlation between the students who do that and the students who are prepared for the exam at the end of the course. OK, uh, that's going to end uh, my presentation. If we could go on to the next person, please. Is this working? Can you hear me now? Yes, that's perfect. OK, cool. Um, sorry, one. It's one of those one uh, microphone works for like Zoom and then the other one works with Teams and have to change all that. But anyway, hello everyone. Hope everyone is having a swell day. My name is Miss Peltier and I am the ninth and 10th grade engineering teacher. Um, what we do in my class is we do a lot of building of things and we, oh goodness gracious, Brahms, go away. My cat, sorry, he's quite a bothersome. Um, but we do a lot of building of things and um, like we do a lot of work that gets us prepared for the business world. Um, we're going to learn how to, like it says on the slide, we're, um, in ninth grade we're going to learn how to act and work in a professional environment. Um, I have the students um, email me their assignments because email is a lost art in today's day and age for the, the younger ones because uh, of social media, but um, the emails are getting how to write a subject and stuff is getting a lot better. Um, learning different components of engineering technology of the past, present and future. Um, we're going to do like I'm really excited about one project we're going to do about. Um, oh, what is it? electricity and how the Tesla coil um, actually is kind of like Wi-Fi for electricity. And would that be a good idea? How what? We'll figure that out together. Um, learn appropriate tools and safe work habits. Um, the ninth graders have already started working on um, some projects. They're doing um, simple machines and they look amazing and I can't wait for them to present about what how it works. Um, and learn about different career fields. We talked about a bunch of different types of engineers um, at the beginning of the year, and now we're going to go in, more in depth with some of them. And the biggest thing for my class is thinking creatively. Um, I'm solving problems that come across. I've loved watching them do that. Like it's it's great. Y'all's kids are amazing. Next slide. As in with the 10th grade, um, the engineering design and presentation, um, we dive deeper into what we did in ninth grade. So where we did a lot of presentations with PowerPoints, we're going to do more of those, but they're going to be a lot longer, a lot more advanced, and they're already starting to do it. It's awesome. Um, a lot more is expected. Um, we're going to do a lot more um, group projects. We actually can do group projects this semester, like this year. Excited about that. Um, with that um, project management, um, like we'll always have someone who is the leader. So it might be a um, student who might not always try to be the leader, um, but we'll give them that op opportunity. Um, and then we'll use um, more advanced concepts and tools like we're going to do um, soldering, which I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, we're going to present these skills in a variety of different ways in a professional manner. So like in written form, in PowerPoint, in Excel, um, just all sorts of things that again get somebody for the business world. And the best way to reach me um, is through Teams. Like I have teams on my phone and like you're welcome to message me with any any questions and stuff. Um, don't message me with the peltier.eastwood at gmail.com. That's where the kids turn in things and I only look at it when I'm grading. So that's not don't don't try to reach me that way. But 
I'm excited for this year. Like it's already going really well and I can't wait to see what your kids do. Uh, now we're going to move on to the uh, electives, uh, Spanish, uh, art, and um, PE. Uh, so we're going to start off with Mr. Duron, the Spanish teacher. All right, good, good evening. Uh, my name is Mr. Duron. I teach all levels of Spanish at, at Eastwood. I'm the only Spanish teacher. Um, so I teach Spanish 1, Spanish 2. AP Spanish Language and Culture and AP Spanish Language and Literature. Spanish one, the basics, right? Knowing the, the basic basics of the words, pencil, pen, chair. So I take that, the basic, not knowing anything, 0%, 10%, taking them to 50 to 60% to, to Spanish two. Spanish two, we take those words and we put them into sentences. And of course, from there, we go into the paragraphs. Um, and so with Spanish two, they're able to communicate. They're more in the 50, 60 percent range to communicate uh, effectively in the target language, which is Spanish. AP Spanish language, we talk more into speaking, uh, understanding, writing, listening, and we listen to different uh, different Spanish from around the world, Spanish speaking countries. And at the end of the year, they take a, a an AP test, and so. The idea is to get them ready, put different accents in Spanish, um, have them interact in groups, to work in group. I like for them to work in group because they are able to express their ideas, work in groups, and, may, and most importantly, uh, develop own own idea, own response based on what they have seen, heard, or read. And so AP Spanish language and, and literature, like the other teachers have mentioned, um, I don't take late work just because the same reason we want them to be ready. AP Spanish literature, uh, AP Spanish literature is more of reading. So what we do, we read text, poems. Um, and so we look into, if we look at different texts and the poems and plays and we analyze them together. We read them in groups, we read them in class. As a class, we look into the uh, terms and importantly, because at the end of the year, they have to remember all the 38 uh, examples and the uh, a college board chooses a few to, and, they, and they put a 65 multiple choice questions and then they have to write four essays uh, and they only have an hour and uh, an hour and 20 minutes to do it. So it's an hour and 40 minutes. I'm sorry. So they don't have much time to do. And so the idea for this is for students to be ready. And so throughout the year, I get them ready. So one of the one of the ways to get them ready is by, you know, having them having the assignments turn in on time. Um, daily daily homework when they have assignments due, then it's due in the next class. When it comes to homework, uh, it's very very important that everyone pays attention because even though it's a, a class that we we see each other every other day, um, it's very important because it follows the pattern and and the classes go within the next class. And so if they fall behind, don't show up to class then they lost one part of the class and so it's going to be harder for them to catch up um supplies needed the, the pencil the pen notebook mainly uh sheets of paper uh for the for the lessons and the stories i provide them either online or in paper and as far as spanish one spanish two then we do the assignments together in class through the online book um and of course if you would like to reach me my email was on the previous uh, page or on teams as well and thank you guys, wonderful kids that we have this year. Uh, good evening, uh, I'm Mr. Pettis. Uh, I am the art teacher. And this year I'm going to be teaching uh, Art 1, uh, Photography 2, and AP and HISD Advanced Art. Um, <clears throat> All of those are, are different types of our classes, uh, but they all um, have the same emphasis, which is uh, primarily uh, figure, using the uh, elements and principles of design uh, to make art. Um, and of course, uh, each of the class, we, we're going to be focusing on different types of art history, um, different artists and people who have influenced 
um, society through through their arts and their fashion and uh, just overall their their um, different points of views, right? Or the different ways of thinking or different ways of looking at things, uh, which is what uh, creates um, such a creative um, uh, class class that we have. Um, you can um, <clears throat> contact me through uh, my email at lprs2 at houstonisd.org, um, or if you have uh, access to Teams, um, you can shoot me a message through Teams as well. And I also have a, uh, a, Google, a Google number uh, that I have given to the students, and you can you can access me through through that way as well. Um, the biggest issue, or I wouldn't say issue, uh, but the biggest um, uh, detriment that the students have in my class uh, throughout the years I've noticed is um, kids not turning in their assignments um, or having the assignments turned in really really late. Um, uh, there's a 10 point deduction every uh, for every class period that the kids don't turn in their assignments. And that's usually what uh, leads to to low grades in my class. Uh, what also leads to low grades in the class is, is kids not not uh, contacting me when there are issues uh, that they may have, you know, like uh, they may not have uh, color pencils or paints or or any any materials. Um, or they made a missed class for uh, for a week and, and don't know uh, where they're at. Uh, but fortunately now, um, I've gotten very good at using um, the hub for class. So everything that uh, that we do in, in, in class now is on the hub as well. So if a kid misses or if a student misses, uh, misses class, they should be able to um, have the assignment uh, available to them on the hub. Um, and, and if they don't, uh, they can contact me and um, I will, uh, of course, uh, pass them all the information uh, whenever they need to. Um, <clears throat> like I said, um, I accept all late work, um, but of course, all late work comes with a penalty. Um, I'll accept every assignment all the way until the last Monday of the, uh, the grading cycle, uh, just because I don't want kids to um, you know, not 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 pass, uh, but I also want to give them a little bit of leeway. I know um, life life is life, and and sometimes uh, things happen, and they may not be able to finish an assignment, right? Uh, but again, uh, like I said, every assignment gets a ten point deduction for every class period that's missed. Um, it's a little bit more difficult in AP Art, of course, uh, because it, it moves at such a fast pace. Um, if you ask the kids now, uh, we are on to our third uh, drawing uh, for the semester um, already. Um, so it's a pretty pretty fast pace uh, that I have in, in, in all the classes. But um, again, I give all the kids an opportunity to, to pass um, all of their assignments um, and turn in the assignments even though they're late. So they'll still get uh, some credit. Um, I try to do everything I can to uh, make sure that the kids um, end up with a good grade at the end of the at the end of the um, the grading cycle. Um, as far as supplies, um, Art One students uh, don't necessarily need any supplies, but uh, because we are in COVID um, COVID times, um, I'm trying to limit the amount of sharing that's going along going along in the class. So if you can, um, or if possible, uh, please please uh, get your students. Uh, some pencils, some color pencils, some markers, and some erasers, so they can, uh, you know, so they don't have to share, um, and we don't have to constant, constantly be uh, cleaning every single utensil that we use. Uh, so it'd probably be best for the kids to have their own materials. Uh, but of course, if you have um, um, resource issues with resources or or or, or buying um, art supplies, uh, please let me know, and I have some that that I can. Um, I can hand the students that they can borrow for for the year. Uh, for AP students, um, they need the same materials, just a little bit better quality <clears throat> art supplies. So rather than buying art supplies at Walmart or Target or Fiesta, uh, maybe go to Michaels or Hobby Lobby or um, some more higher end um, art supply stores. Um, they they tend to tend to have higher quality uh, materials. Uh, which helps in um, art making, especially in AP, where um, 
they, they need to make high quality work um, in the AP class. They need to by the end of the year, they need to have 15 complete artworks. So, um, you know, that's something that they need to have, um, you know, in order for them to make quality work. Um, they also need to have uh, uh, sketchbooks and I have a few sketchbooks at, at, uh, at school, but um, if they have their own, it would probably be best. Um, it's also very important for them to document um, their process and everything that they kind of uh, uh, focus on or things that they are creating or things that they are thinking about. Um, the AP class is not just about making art, but it's also about uh, studying uh, something, studying uh, an artist, studying a style or learning uh, different perspectives um, in art. So uh, by documenting everything that they do throughout the year, it kind of helps them fill in uh, the portfolio at the end of the year, which is very important because they need to have uh, at minimum 15 slides, uh, kind of like uh, PowerPoints, but um, the PowerPoints have to be about um, the artwork that they make. Um, for the photography class, um, I've been very fortunate this year to, um, to have been um, <clears throat> to have added uh, six more cameras to the class. So we have a total of uh, 12 um, SLR cameras, professional cameras. Um, <clears throat> and then we also have about 18 uh, regular semi-professional cameras that, that the kids can use. So all of those cameras are available for all of the students. So every student has one camera so they don't have to share. Uh, which is a really big deal, uh, but the kids still need to have their own um, SD cards, which are little cards that go in the cameras um, and they take out and then they upload their work um, to the laptops from those SD cards. Um, they also need to have a card reader and then also if you can find a wireless mouse for them for them to work on Photoshop, um, it would be very ideal. Um, there is a uh, uh, a contract that I sent out uh, with the students, it's on the hub. Um, and <clears throat> that contract needs to be signed by you, the parents, in order for them to check out the cameras. Uh, the only thing that uh, that delays that is, is them not turning in the, uh, the contract. Uh, but once the contract is signed and I have it with me, um, the kids are, are welcome to borrow or check out the cameras um, and just they, they just need to be careful with making sure that everything that is in uh, the cases stays in the cases and also making sure that the cameras are always uh, protected and are never um, played around with. Um, if by any chance uh, something does happen to the cameras, um, uh, we, we can uh, talk about that uh, at a later time. Um, so that's that's it for our class. If you guys have any uh, any questions again, feel free to uh, send me an email um, or if you have any questions about the AP class or um, the photography class, feel free to uh, send me a message and I'll now pass it on to Ms. Solis, the uh, phys physical education teacher. And we have about one minute remaining in our scheduled time. So um, parents, remember this will be recorded. So if you have to get to something else, we completely understand, but we will be quick. We only have just a couple more teachers left. Hi guys, good evening. So I'll be fast. Mine's pretty simple. Um, I'll be the physical education teacher for this school year. My name is Coach Solis. Um, the quickest way to probably reach me is Teams or just shoot me an email, which I know several parents have already uh, done so. So that's always the quickest way to get um, a hold of me. Um, next slide, Mr. Perez. Um, so my class is pretty, uh, uh, I guess, straightforward. My biggest thing is just their students' daily participation um, is my biggest. That's where majority of their grade comes out of, um, dressing out every day for class. I've, excuse me, told students that they're able to wear shorts, sweatpants, uh, shirts, long sleeve shirts, whatever they're comfortable in is fine with me, just as long as um, they're able to participate um, with whatever it is that they are wearing. Tiny shoes, preferably tiny shoes, not Crocs or uh, what are the other ones, Doc Martens, none of those. 
preferably clothes, tennis shoes, and water bottles, just because we still cannot physically drink from the water fountain. They have to fill up the water bottle. So the um, easiest way is just to bring a water with you, water bottle with you, sorry. Um, and that's pretty much the basics for me. That is where the kids will get their biggest grade from out of me is their participation grade. Because like I said, um, excuse me, I'm PE. I'm not uh, giving them any type of written work, anything like that. It's pretty much um, based on their skills, but their abilities to play. And that's where we um, generate um, their grades from, where I generate their grades from. And that's pretty much it for me. Um, thank you, guys. Is Mr. Rubicob sure. on the line? I'm not sure if Mr. Rubicob was allowed uh, available this evening, um, but he wanted to let you know that he is the one goal student leadership and reading teacher. He is new to our building and he is super charged up to engage with your students and your children here. And his contact information is right there. Um, and please feel free to reach out to him at any time concerning one goal, student leadership, or the reading class. I believe that concludes our presentation for the evening. Mr. Perez, am I correct? Uh, yes. So we want to thank you very much. We're sorry we went a little over, but we are all very excited to work with your child to have a successful year and to make and continue to make Eastwood Academy the best of the best. Have a pleasant evening and we thank you.